Hey, this video is for section 8.2, multiplying and factoring. Our goals are we can multiply a monomial by a polynomial, and we can also factor a monomial from a polynomial. So I'd like to remind you to make sure that you have completed the lesson check problems for section 8.1, and with that, we will get started. Today, we're going to use the distributive property to multiply a monomial by a polynomial. Remember, a monomial is a single term that usually has a variable, and a polynomial is just several monomials adding or subtracting together. So let's take a look at this example, and here's a visual for you on the right that you can take a look at. Um, oh, we're, we're distributing. So take the 2x and draw some arrows, and we are going to be multiplying, obviously. So we're going to have 2x times 3x plus... 2x times 1. Remember, we're just sharing that number in front. And lastly, let's use our skills from chapter 7. We're going to be multiplying the 2x and the 3x, and we get 6x to the second, because technically those are little ones up there. And we're adding the ones to get 2. And then 2x times 1 is just 2x, because when we multiply by 1, nothing happens. And that's it for our very first example. You can see over in the picture we have 6x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's where the 6 is coming from, and then we have two regular x's, and that's where this 2 is coming from right here. Let's take a look at our very first example um, officially. What is a simpler form of this expression? So negative x cubed times 9x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 7. Definitely a mouthful. So what I suggest you do is rewrite this, and feel free to put a little 1 in front. I think that will help with this problem. Okay, we are definitely distributing that term in front, so draw three arrows this time, because there are three terms. And now let's just set it up. So negative 1x to the third times 9x to the fourth plus negative 1x to the third times negative 2x to the third and plus negative 1x to the third times 7. So there's our setup. Once you get used to these, you can skip that step, but right now I don't want you to. Okay, let's t look at the coefficients now. Negative uh, 1 times 9 is negative 9. And now we're going to be adding the exponents because they are the same base. So we have 3 plus 4. Next part, we have a negative 1 times a negative 2. That's a positive 2. And then x to the 3 plus 3. Hopefully you see where I'm getting these exponents from. That's where I'm getting them from right there. And then lastly... Negative 1 times positive 7 is negative 7, and x to the third is the only thing, the only variable there. And we're basically at our answer. Negative 9, x to the 7th, 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2, x to the 6th, because 3 plus 3 is 6, and bring down the last term, minus 7, x to the third. There is our simplified form, and that matches up with option D. So we just use the distributive property to multiply a monomial by a polynomial. Now we're going to learn how to factor. And I know you have been introduced to this last year. Factoring a polynomial reverses the multiplication process. So it's going in the exact opposite direction of distributing. It's sometimes called undistributing. So the first step of factoring is to find the GCF, the greatest common factor. And in example two, we're going to practice finding the GCF of a polynomial. What is the GCF of the terms of 5x to the third plus 25x squared plus 45x? First, what we should do is rewrite the terms separately. So I'm just going to write them like this, and I encourage you to do the same thing. 
and I would like to find the GCF of each of those terms. So what I'm going to do is list the prime factors of each term. And then I'm going to identify the factors that are common to all. Okay, 5x to the third. 5 times x times x times x. Basically, I'm just breaking down the monomial into its little pieces. 25 can be split up into 5 times 5, and then x squared is x times x. And lastly, 45x can be split up into 9 times 5, but 9 can be split up into 3 times 3 times 5. And if you multiplied those three numbers, you would get 45, and then there's a 1x. Now, once you have all of those listed, I want you to circle everything in common. There's a 5 in each row, and there's also 1x in each row. Therefore, the GCF is 5 times x, or putting it together, it's just 5x. That is what the GCF is. And we got that by listing all of the factors of each term. Once you have found the GCF of a polynomial's terms, you can factor it out of the polynomial. Remember, factoring just means reverse distributing. So we're going to put it, the GCF in front of the rest. So, step one. We need to factor this polynomial. Step one is to factor the polynomial by finding the first factor in each term, okay? Basically what we're doing is we're finding the GCF. So I'm going to write find GCF of each term. So same process as the last example. 4x to the fifth equals something. 24x to the third and 8x. So now take a moment and write the prime factors and also split all the variables up. There's five of them, so we have five x's there. 24 can be split up into 2 times 2, that's 4, times 6, which is 2 times 3. And then there are three x's. I'm looking at the exponent. And then 8x can be split up into 2 times 2 times 2 times x. Now, let's circle the like terms. So it looks like the GCF is 2 times 2 times x, which equals 4x. That is the GCF. Now we're not done with this problem. We need to use that GCF and put it in front of the rest of the terms. So step two is going to be factoring out the GCF. So that basically means we're going to take the 4x and put it in front. Now, the way that you figure out what's inside the parentheses is you basically look at what is not circled in your list. So take a look right here. This is left. So how many x's is that? That's x to the fourth. So we're going to write that down. Oop, that is not a pen. x to the fourth. Now take a look at the next line. Remember I just got it from right here. Okay, take a look at the next line and let's see what's left. We have 2 times 3 which is 6, x, x, so that's x squared. So 6x squared is left. And last one, the 2 is left. So plus 2. One second. So our factored form is 4x 
times the quantity x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 2. That is our answer. Example 4. A helicopter landing pad is sometimes marked with a circle inside a square so that is visible from the air. What is the area of the shaded region of the helipad at the right? We'll write your answer in factored form. First step is to find the area of the shaded region, so the red in the picture at right. Now, it's a square, so that means the sides are equal to each other. And the way that you find the area of a square is you just multiply side times side. So it's going to be area um, of square, I'm going to use a little subscript, is 2x times itself, and that equals 4x squared. So area of square equals 4x squared. Now let's find the area of the circle. Basically what we're doing is we're finding the area of the square and subtracting the area of the circle because the shaded region is only the little corners. And the area of a circle is always pi r squared. They tell us right here in this picture that r is x, so you just have to replace it with an x instead. So the area of the circle is pi x squared. Now to find the area of the shaded region, you just subtract them. So it's going to be 4x squared minus pi x squared. Now I know it looks weird, so don't freak out, it's alright. We're done with step one. Step two, factor the expression. Find the GCF. So take the 4x squared and rewrite it. Take the pi x squared and rewrite it. And basically we're just splitting it up like last time into its little factors. And pi times x times x. What's in common? The x's. So that means that the GCF is equal to x times x, which is equal to x to the second. That is the GCF. Now the very last step is to take that GCF and put it in front. So let's rewrite 4x squared minus pi x squared. We're going to take that GCF and put it in front, so x squared. Now remember to find the rest of what's in the parentheses, you take a look at the above and you basically just circle the rest. And I'm using a different color so hopefully it pops out to you. And rewrite that inside the parentheses. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then there's a minus pi involved. You see there's a minus sign right there, so minus pi. And that's it. The factored form is x squared times 4 minus pi. Take a moment. Feel free to rewind, um, pause at any point. Try the lesson check for this section if you feel comfortable. If not, wait until we do problems like this together during class. And another reminder, make sure you do 8.1 lesson check. Have a good one.